Hello, my DGENs. So I'm level 41 now, and if you were a launch player like me, then you should be around here, 40, 41-ish. I would say that at this point, we're kind of in the mid game. We're looking at all of these different things. We're like, should I farm this? Should I not? Which one should I farm? Or should I not farm and just play with a cat? So in this video, I wanted to go through a whole bunch of mid game tips. It's not all going to be about farming. There are some combat ones as well. And if you did have something to share for the mid game that I didn't cover, then absolutely, please do share it down in the comments below. We would all appreciate it. Hi. Let's get started. And so for number one, and I'm really hoping that you guys know this already, but if you needed to progress the day and you've already used up your rest, what you can actually do is hop into the hollow deep dive system, look for chapter two interlude, go into the combat commissions and look for the one that says testing with your life actually on the line. Hop into it. Some people like to use Billy, but for me, I can't be stopped changing it. So I just go in and this is the commission where you just have to go around and break a whole bunch of boxes. Typically you're able to do this in about 20 seconds if it's not Billy, or if you bring him, it probably takes about 10. And so all you have to do is talk to the guy to finish it up. And as you can see, I finished that commission in 18 seconds. And so after that, the day should have progressed, as you can see over here, to nighttime. So number two, the second thing I wanted to talk about is this ice damage, ether damage, whatever elemental damage shield, as you can see with the blue bar over there. So typically the game advises you to break through it by using damage. However, you can actually get rid of it without dealing the full damage, but instead inflicting the attribute anomaly of the enemy's attribute weakness. So in this instance, because this guy is weak to ice, I just have to get him to be frozen or shattered. And so hopefully his shield should disappear right now. It was really nice because it caters towards the anomaly teams that don't do too much direct damage. Like they don't do a whole bunch of crits and big, big damage, but most of their damage is actually loaded into the anomaly attribute triggering. So in this case, shatter. All right, so for number three, I wanna talk about disc farming at IK35 because by now you've probably seen all of the people yelling, yo, you better be farming those discs at 35 because it's more efficient. And look, to be honest, they're kind of right. But what I am gonna to say to old mate over here is that it's also okay to not farm discs at 35 or 40 and to wait until 45 or even 50. So the logic is that disc farming gets better and upgraded on every one of the X5 levels. So as you can see, 35, 45, 55. But on the other hand, the upgrade materials like your W engine, your promotions and all of that, they get upgraded at every X0 level. So I'm talking 40, 50, 60, well, there is no 60, it's just 40 and 50. So it actually does make sense to farm discs at 35, 45, do it for five levels, and then start from there. 40 to 45, pump it into these ones here. I only really thought about it when I hit IK40, so I didn't even get a chance to farm the discs at 35. But to be honest, unless you're pushing like ultra hard on Shiyu defense and, and it's not even worth pushing Shiyu defense in the stable mode, I just straight up like would not even bother because at best, you're probably going to be able to push maybe like two or three nodes in the rotating section. And that is gonna get you a grand total of maybe like one pull because 60 times three, 180, 160 gems per pull. Now, don't get me wrong, my guys, a pull is great, however, I'm not sure the mental anguish from playing through this cleanup is worth it. Because I went in for a run. I ran this one over here, which gives Freedom Blues the anomaly set as well as the ice set for your Ellen. And let me show you what I got. I'm pretty sure I put it on my grace. Yup, it's this one right here. Mm. Oh, that is, a, <laughs> that is a peak disc if I've ever seen one. He kept making me depressed because what a piece of shit. And so it was after getting this piece of disappointment that I was like, man, I am not going in until after IK45. Because at IK45, when this level 51 unlocks, you get two guaranteed drops for S ranks. At least then I can be depressed about two pieces being trash. This strategy guys, I call it maximizing the efficiency of my sanity. And if you're a doctor, then my guys, you should understand. Also keep in mind that Shiyu resets like every single month for its rotating mode. So we can just chill for this month. Yeah, we lost a pull, so what? And then we can go ultra hard next month when we're at least 45. And I guarantee you, we will have a way better time. Now, in that case, then what should you farm for? For me, I'm looking at building a third team. So I'm looking at the Grace, I'm looking at the Piper. I'm also looking at my supports, Nicole and Sokaku, and I need to juice my Ambi up. There are lots of characters that do need a little bit of love. For me personally, I do see that Zhu Yuan is coming in about three days time. So I will pre-farm when the timer gets to about two days. All right, number four. And this one's pretty cool because it's a little bit more of a visual effect. 
But here I have Ambi right, and in her weapon slot, her W engine, that is her signature. Equipping a character, their signature weapon, gets you this toggle over here. So if I click this, you'll see, disable the exclusive skin effect in battle. So I can click confirm, and you can see it toggles off, or I could toggle it back on. Now, if I actually switch to a different W engine, replace over there, I can still use this toggle, or I can have it on like that. So what it means is that as long as you have equipped it once, then you don't have to keep it equipped to be able to get that glowing skin. And in terms of what the visual effect looks like, in combat, when you use certain skills like your EX or whatever, more often than not, their hair glows. All right, my guys, number five. A lot of you are probably wondering what the heck is going on with this damn black cat, because you can't ever seem to please it. My guys, not anymore. I will be your cat interpreter because I'm a master at pleasing puss. And so if Inky is in a group, easy game, pull out a can of cat food and then only feed the black cat. However, I am sure you have come across the meow owl. Maybe it's time to ask you for help or the meow owl or the meat owl or the meow purr. And so my guys, here is the interpretation. Meow owl, maybe it's trying to ask you for help. Feed it. Keyword here is maybe, and you feed it, because there is an almost identical one, meow ow, perhaps it's trying to ask you for help. Keyword perhaps, then you pet it. But my guys, it doesn't stop there. Me ow, perhaps it's trying to ask you for help, you feed it. Meow per per, you play with it, and meow ow, you also play with it. Uh, <laughs> Like my guys, whoever figured it out, kudos to you guys because y'all are freaking crazy. So to be honest, I cannot take credit for that section. I'm just a ferroni. Meow. Okay, number six. Hopefully you know by now that there are a few quests that are unmarked on the map. Around IK40 and 41, there is one where you talk to a girl named Tina who is holding a sign in front of Lumina Square in front of the officer Mew Mew. And there is another in 6th Street where the phone rings and there's a creepy person on the other end. So the other thing is that I just wanted to warn you because one of them told me that it was going to take two hours to do it. I didn't believe it. And in the end, it actually ended up freaking taking two hours. So if you are going to do it, set aside some time for it, or you can actually pause, like going into the menu and clicking this one over here, hit confirm. And then when you try to go back in, you can see in progress, infinite abyss, continue. So you can go back to where you left off. However, you do have to finish off this commission before you can take another one, because if you cancel, then you just can't get back in. All right, number seven, I wanna talk about hollow zero, because you're probably at a point where you can actually take more than three people. As you can see, I have five squad members in total, because what you can do is you can bring them with you, but not you use them until you get to the rest stages. And then when you get to the rest stage, you can call the phone, decide not to use them, and they will give you some kind of buff. And those buffs actually do count towards your collection status over here. So it is good to try to at least get all of them once. And whilst we're in here, let me give you a quick bonus. I hope you guys already know this, but there should be a button down here if you have collected all of the items in a particular set, because it does lead to a quest. This is kind of like a lore quest. So it's not too much, but it's like 150 EXP or something. It's, it's pretty nice. Okay, number eight, Woodpecker Electro. Now, this is a really, really nice set, a fantastic generalist set. However, please, please, please read how it works because there's a good chance that you're missing out on one of the 9% attack buffs. For me, it was the dodge counter because most people like to parry. I like to parry a lot. It feels freaking nice and satisfying. However, it does not give one of your attack stats here. You must specifically dodge counter with the user. In this case, it's Ellen. On top of that, the duration is relatively short. So it does work well for characters like Ellen because as you can see, she can proc her EX skill quite frequently. However, for Soldier 11, it's not exactly that great. Number nine, if you have Nekomata or Grace, then I would highly, highly recommend running them with Piper. And hopefully most of you should know this by now. Piper is just honestly starting to look like the Shangling of the game. Just an absolutely insane A-grade unit that does a ridiculous amount of damage. Grace and Piper's Disorder team is relatively well known by now, but I think a lot of people are still sleeping on Nekomata Piper team. And so yeah, if you do have the Nekomata, I would highly, highly suggest giving her a shot with Piper. Make sure that your Neko is using the physical set so that she can get the 35% extra damage. And on your Piper, she needs to have the anomaly set over here. And in terms of the gameplay itself, it is super, super straightforward. Piper Assault, Neko comes in, 35% damage bonus, scratches the hell out of them. It looks pretty simple, right? But so many optimizations to be had, which does bring me to my last point. If you wanna improve your gameplay, I would highly, highly recommend that you watch this person right here. 
His name is Kekon, and I personally don't know him, but as a content creator, I know what optimizations need to be made for me to play better. This guy actually does all of the optimizations. And just watching the gameplay, it's like so freaking chaotic, but at the same time, even low key beautiful. Because if you break down the clip and slow it down, you'll see that he is animation canceling pretty much everything. And when he does cancel, he knows what move is coming next. When he does the quick assist, it's instant because he knows his rotation. He understands when to parry, when to dodge counter. And all in all, his gameplay is just a freaking work of art. So yeah, my guys, that is the 10 mid game tips that I had. Again, if you had any yourself that I didn't talk about, then let us know down in the comments below. But otherwise, that is the end of the video. So thank you, DGENs, for watching this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.